Hey, welcome back to My Chosen Farm. This is the third in our series of how-to videos that we're making to help you grow food gardens this year. And for this video, we'd like to give a special shout out to the folks in Clem2 on the central coast of British Columbia. We sent some plants up to you guys this week and yeah, we're just super excited to see them growing in the community garden and the greenhouses up there. So here's uh, some instruction for everyone, but particularly aimed at you guys as you grow this amazing food garden this year. Often when you buy plants at the garden center, you're gonna find them in packs like this. This is a 606 pack, and you will see that there's one plant in each one. When you go, try not to choose the plants that are really big, even though it's tempting because you think you're getting a better deal. When you pull those individual plants out, because they're big and they're growing in a very small area, they are often going to be what's called root bound. And that means that the roots are too tight against the edge of the pot. That's a very small amount of soil for a plant to grow in. When plants are root bound, they don't tend to develop uh, as well as if they're smaller and then you transplant them. So let's have a look at this tomato. So this tomato is not root bound. That's about what you wanna see. There's lots of soil that you can still see between the roots. If I was going to transplant this one, um, what I would do is just, we call it tickling the roots at the farm. You just wanna lift them slightly like that. Don't be worried if you break them a bit, that's actually pruning them. And now you can see if these roots are growing, they're gonna be able to grow out into the soil much more naturally than if you jammed that in. Do you see how the root's gonna to have to really reorient itself if you don't help it? We do this first. So, there we go. If you have a perennial plant in a very small pot, sometimes they're so root bound that we actually take a knife or a shovel and we whack into the side of it uh, to break it apart. It's a bit violent, but it does actually work well. So if you were transplanting a tomato, um, most plants that you put in uh, kale, squash, mizuna, arugula, chard, you're going to want to keep <clears throat> the same soil level. They don't like having their stems buried. These ones, on the other hand, tomatoes, uh, do like having their stems buried because like potatoes that are in the same family, they actually grow additional roots off the stem. So by very carefully pruning off these bottom leaves, I'm not touching the stem directly because that can bruise it. And if it's bruised, it doesn't grow roots in the same way. So by pruning this off carefully, not touching the stem, when I plant it, I'm gonna plant it up to here. And that means that instead of this amount of root, as this plant grows, it's going to have this amount of root. So you can see that over the course of this plant's lifetime in your garden, now that it has its roots separated out, and you're burying it to here so it can develop those new roots, that's a much healthier plant. So again, uh, normally we would be doing this in our garden bed, but today we can't, so I would put that in. Uh, if you're digging your hole in the garden bed, hi Kita, uh, you would dig down and then you would loosen the soil in the bottom of the hole, maybe mix in some soil amendment, like some granular fertilizer if you want it, and so when these roots are growing down into that soil, they're not hitting like a frying pan. They're hitting a nice, soft medium that it's easy for them to establish into. So dig your hole. Let's, let's remember this is tomatoes and they wanna have their stem buried. So there's, there's our garden, there's our hole. I'm now fluffing it up. Uh, maybe I would add some granular organic fertilizer down it goes, keep it nice and straight, and then I would be burying it up the stem. I uh, should have brought more soil. Okay, the other trick when you've transplanted something like this is to make a bit of a lake around it, like a dam. And that way when you're watering, the water will actually stay next to the plant and hydrate it down. When you water a transplant in, you want to use a lot more water than you think you need. And that's not necessarily to hydrate the plant, it's actually to take the air bubbles that are now caught around the roots and force them to come up. 
So when you do what's called flood watering, so you water really heavily two or three times when you transplant, you'll see there's all these little bubbles that'll percolate up around the soil. And what that does is it actually tucks the soil really close to the roots and that helps them to grow again better. If you don't do that kind of flood watering, you have air pockets under the plant. And even if the soil is moist, those roots are still drying out. So you get a lot less transplant shock if you transplant in the evening, so they have overnight to recover, and you do that deep flood watering. These are charred plants. And if you bought these at our farm stand or at a garden center, you'll notice that there's a lot of plants in one pot. So these ones, we've got three, four, five, and there's probably about 18 or 20 charred plants in here. This is actually a really economical way to buy plants if you're at a garden center, rather than the individual ones, which have roots that tend to be very root bound, and you only get six plants. So one of the things uh, that we need to do is separate these. If you put these in the ground like this, uh, just pop them out of, okay, so let's talk about popping them. Put your fingers in, flip it over so you're supporting the soil, give the pot a little squeeze, and it should just lift right off. There you go. Look at all those roots. So that is a pot that is starting to get root bound. It's not too bad yet, but it's definitely on its way. So what you want to do here is gently separate them. So I'm trying not to touch the roots directly too much, but I'm pulling them apart and it wasn't that hard to do that. Now what I'm going to do is separate these again. Again, just I'm not squeezing the soil. I'm just gently holding onto it as I pull that apart. Again, I'm trying not to do this on a sunny day. If I have no other option, what I'm doing is putting something between the roots and the sun. So say the sun is coming this way, I would put something there just to shade the roots so they're not sitting in direct sunlight while I'm waiting to put them in. Today again is an overcast day, so it's perfect for transplanting. So here are my two little guys and I'm just going to gently jiggle them as I pull them apart and you will see well, that got the lion's share of the root soil but that's actually a pretty good root ball. One of the things we do at the Chosen Farm that's a bit different is we inoculate all of our soil when we're potting with a mycorrhizal fungi. So that's a, a fancy way of saying it's a beneficial fungus and it forms this friendly relationship with the plant where the plant helps the fungus out because the fungus needs to eat, but it can't photosynthesize. And the fungus, which can make, uh, it's called a mycorrhizal network, and it looks a bit like a really fine spider web, if you've ever seen that in your house when you haven't cleaned in a while. And this spider web go of mycelium goes all the way through the soil. So it multiplies many, many times the access to nutrients and water out of that soil that the plant would have if it was just growing on its own. So there is a chard. Again, uh, a plant like a tomato, you want to bury it up higher up the stem because it will make more roots. A chard, you don't want to do that. You just want to keep the same soil level. So this soil uh, is nice, it's fine, it's got good compost and it's light. So before you transplant into the garden, you want to fork your soil or dig your soil over and make it nice and light so it's not really heavy for these little roots to start growing into. So again, just gently pull it apart, um, put that in it. I, and if you notice, I'm really not touching those roots. I'm holding the stems and the leaves up high. And then I'm just gently pushing that soil in around and then just a firm little tuck. I'm not smashing it in but I am pushing it in quite firmly. And again, if you make a little edge, say we're planting a, a row of chard here, if you make a little edge, tuck that in, you wanna keep them nice and straight. They shouldn't be flopping around. Um, when you go to water it, it's actually gonna keep the water where it's supposed to be. So we'll put, uh, He is very relaxed. He really enjoys being the center of what we're doing here at the farm. Okay, so tuck that one in, maybe one more. Okay, a little bit of an edge on there. So 
when we take the water and we're putting the water on, we're going to water it right around the base. And uh, this is kind of shallow on the table. You can see some of the bubbles coming up there. Do you see that? That's the air pockets. Remember too, plants really want to grow. Seeds really want to grow. It, like, don't be afraid of doing this stuff for the first time. It's pretty hard to mess it up. So we're going to give it another little water there, another bit. And for these ones, that's enough to tuck those roots in. Okay, do you see how one's flopping over a little bit? You could just stick it up a bit more here. All right, so there is our chard. Easy. So when you're choosing your plants at a garden center, or perhaps you've started plants indoors and uh, life has gotten busy, you haven't put them out when you thought you were going to, something to watch for is when a plant starts doing what is called bolting. That's when it goes to seed. Here you can see that these stems are starting to get really long. There's a leaf, stem, leaf, stem, like this, nice and tall. That's not what you want. This indicates that the plant is stressed out and it's deciding that it really has to make flowers. That's not going to give you a lot of salad greens. So I would probably, if this was one you started yourself at home, I would probably just cut these off and eat them as salad greens rather than planting them out and start seeding again. If you see this in a garden center, I would probably avoid ones with really long stems like this. So if you compare these ones, where the stem is starting to get really long to these chard. Do you see how all the leaves are coming out of the base? You don't see a long, tall stem there. You just see lots and lots of leaves coming out. And that is a plant that is going to transplant well and grow to its full potential in your garden. So thanks for joining us. I hope that the video was helpful. If there's something else that you would like me to explain in your garden, uh, especially for folks up in Clem too, please send us an email, info at thechosenfarm.ca. We'd love to hear from you. So, Akita. <laughs> oh, it's a good life. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> a good life. Okay. All right.